Good morning everybody. This is Dear Mama Sal, Monday morning. Very nice 8 degrees. Which of course is here in Canada. And for those of you living in northern Washington state that will be 47 degrees. It's a beautiful <laughs> rainy day. Actually it's just stopped raining to be fair. You know, I have to be accurate on this. It has been raining and um, it's, thank you very much, God. Uh, there is no rain at the moment while I'm driving to work, which is wonderful. Hope you all had a good weekend. Uh, by the time you watch this, uh, Monday will be over, just about. And for some of you, Tuesday will have begun. Or is partway through so I'm really hoping that you did have a good time I had a, a good weekend I must admit I was very grateful I got a lot of things accomplished which is always good uh, I'm on a new mission uh, and that is to clear up the mess that has been the black hole of my back room you know the be when I did the major renos everything went into two back rooms uh, two bedrooms and slowly, very slowly, you know, I've been working through. About two years ago, I managed to get the one room absolutely cleared and repainted beautifully and, you know, sort of made it look pretty. And then I got the other room looking pretty. And somehow or other, because it was the back room where things went when I was doing the renos. It sort of became the dumping ground. I don't know if any of you relate to that, but it became the dumping ground of, of oh, um, I'll quickly just put this in the back room. And I've now, of course, realized the error of that way because there's stuff there that I obviously didn't finish sorting out when I was doing the renos. There's stuff there from 10 years ago that should have gone out and so anyway the, that's the bad side of it the good side of it is I got in there and um, my goal is each weekend to spend an hour in there because it's amazing if you actually get focused and do an hour how much you can get done I managed to get as far as clearing the whole of the uh, carpet now when I you know because there were things all over the floor as well as stacked up and it's actually quite exciting to see um, what is leaving the room. And I really have to thank Nana because I could hear her in my head and everything I picked up, I go, everything, a place for everything and everything in its place. And I'm going, I have no place for that, therefore it has to go. And my other dumping room, I have two of them, is my storage room and then my garage, which used to be able to hold a car long, long time ago. Now you can hardly walk in there. So I'm on a mission, first of all, to get this room. This year it's to get this room done. Next year I will do the garage. Um, or even this year if I maybe in the fall I'll do the garage I'll start on the garage anyway the garage is going to be a long haul I know that and that's of course why I'm procrastinating about it but if I keep doing one hour and I have that discipline um, these things can get done how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time and the, the, the trick that I learned from the disaster that was my bedroom is that as fast as you tidy it, you've got to stop untidying it again. <laughs> I know that sounds so obvious, doesn't it? 
Ja. So it's very it was a very quiet weekend because Yvonne was away and so was Laurie. So I had a very quiet house. Uh, I invited Wade up to have lamb with me on Saturday because he likes lamb and none of the other members of the family do. And <clears throat> so it's always nice to be able to cook lamb when everybody's away. And he really appreciates it. So. And it was very tasty. I must admit, I really enjoyed it. And then, oh, I forgot to tell you the surprise of the morning. Yeah, listen to this. You know, I've got a fish tank, and I think I've told you about Vinny. Now, Vinny's been around since my cousin Vinny came out as a movie, and that must be 15, 16 years ago. I would think, somewhere in this. Anyway, so Vinny is a bottom feeder and he has been in <laughs> he's been in there for fifteen years. Now I've got a horror story to tell you. And the horror story is this that you know I didn't see him for a month and I presumed he was dead. And so I, <laughs> I feel terrible. So I stopped feeding. <laughs> yeah, I stopped feeding him. Um, and I, actually, about a week ago, I turned the um, filter off on the tank because what's the point of filtering the water? Vinny's gone. Well, this morning, <laughs> this morning I get up, and something, you know, thank you God, something made me lean down right next to the tank and who am I eyeball to eyeball with? Vinny. How he has survived I don't know but he was alive. Well you can imagine the words I used and I'm running around like a you know what trying to get the, the pump restarted to give him air and um, obviously find the fish food thank god I didn't throw it away yet uh, find the fish food <laughs> and then huck some fish food in there for the poor thing anyway um, he lives he is no longer a dead fish I mean he came to life again I don't know I, I can't tell you how that happened. They say that if you, you know, fish will die if you don't feed it for three days. Well, quite honestly, I don't think I've fed Vinny in a month. Oh, I am a wicked, wicked person. <laughs> Why am I laughing? Because I think I'm laughing because you guys know I would never intentionally do that to um, anything. Never mind a fish. I don't know what he's been eating. Anyway, the good news is he found something to eat. And apparently his guild managed to filter the dirty water. Just amazing. And talking about animals, I um, want to give a shout out here for Jen's dog, Kuru, who got attacked um, towards the end of last week by a dog that ripped off his ear, and, well just about three quarters, and um, did a bit of a number on its neck and head. Now, the good news is that Kuru will hopefully be just fine. Um, he should be getting his uh, drain out today and the vet will check on him today. Um, and obviously he's been quite sheepish and you understand why I mean he's been through a hell of a shock but Jen was saying that he's perking up a bit but here's this this part of the story that that I need to tell you um, he was attacked 
not by a Rottweiler or a Doberman or a German Shepherd or a Pitbull. No, he was attacked by a Scotty. Now, who ever heard of an attack Scotty? I mean, when you think of attack dogs, you do not think of a Scotty. You know, that little black cute thing. Ankle biter. I mean, seriously, who ever heard of attack Scotty? So I said to Jen, this, this board's, I mean, obviously after I'd given all the condolences on the, what had happened to Kuru, but you know, it's, it was like, this Scotty must have got the fright of its life to have come out fighting like that. And it turned out from what I gathered that Bear opened a door and suddenly there was the Scotty. And I think the Scotty just got a big fright. And that's what started it all off. Anyway, it goes to show you never know what dog is an attack dog. <laughs> Imagine an attack Scotty. You can sort of see it going for ninja lessons or something. Really? Well, I suppose any dog, when it's trying to survive... Now, you have to know about Kuru, really. You know, Kuru is part pug. Probably the most docile dog you can see. And poor Kuru probably wonders what on earth he did. But as I said to Jen, it was like the time that Bina got attacked. You never quite know, you know, whether... I always said I never really knew whether Bina gave the other dog the evil eye or you know, passed wind in his face or did something like that. Do you know what I mean? You never quite know. Oh, oh. Cops have stopped a car. Um, you never quite know what they've done that we don't know about. Because I don't speak fluent dog. Um, I'm never quite sure, you know, what the real reason was. So, very, very interesting to see. Now, over the weekend I did put some video down, but I thought it sounded a bit Blah. So I didn't upload it, but I hope you enjoyed the one about how to wash your Swiffers and keep them bright and sparkly. Uh, it's one of my favorite tricks, actually. And I gather from the feedback that you guys are enjoying those little things. So if any of you have got any handy, excuse me, handy hints um, like that, you know, we've, we've done refill the uh, soap dispenser and of course if any of you have got a Swiffer wet jet you know how I need, you know that I know how to refill that as well of course. Um, but if there, if you, any of you have got any um, handy hints like that that we can share. Pass them on and I'll gladly put them on a vlog for you. Or if they're ones that I can play with, I will video vlog them. Such fun. Just reading a sign on the back of a car, other than baby on board, which I now name means something completely different. It just says never, never forget that a group of small, dedicated people can change the world. It's always been that way. Interesting. And isn't it true? Great pork house this weekend, by the way. Um, lots of fun. Uh, Oz came in, and we know there's always chaos when Oz comes in. <laughs> and um, he really always has such a nice slanted view of the world. <laughs> uh, we got a new listener that joined us from. Um, the UK from Wiltshire 
in the UK and uh, a new viewer rather um, when we were on Vaughan uh, so that was good it was quiet though on on the broadcasts much quieter than normal especially on the Vaughan broadcasts where we normally pick up a lot of extra viewers as well um, but anyway it was it was fun and in, intimate in, in, no complaints from me So overall, a good, successful weekend for me, one that I enjoyed, got things done, which I love achievement. Um, I'm hoping that you all have a wonderful week. I'm looking for less drama this week than I had last week. It was definitely a lot of drama that went down last week. <laughs> and. Um, so I definitely don't need any more of that this week. I just keep it very calm again. I really do realize that I do like a life without heavy drama. Have a good day, everybody. I will catch up with you tomorrow. And in the meantime, look after one another if you can. If you know anybody on the Dear Mama Soul network that needs a bit of support right now, please go ahead and give it to them. I'm just trying to think who I've heard from recently. Hopefully some of you saw that um, uh, that picture of Max with his baby brother. I think it was his baby brother. Anyway, um, it's so cute. Um, and good to see Max is recovering um, as well as he is. Uh, that would be Katie's um, grandson. And I'm sure that they're grateful he's alive. You know, he may well be scarred, but boy, he's alive. And uh, that's a really important part. I'm not quite sure what they will do with the scars, whether they will... Um, you know, do, do different things. I, I just don't know enough about that sort of reconstructive surgery. Um, I'll ask Katie what the plan is. But you know something? As I said, I, I am so grateful that he's alive. And obviously, there are plans for that young boy that we don't understand. That he had to go through this uh, at this stage of his life. Mm. Have a good one, everybody thought for the day not all things that you think are over and dead <laughs> apparently are um, if you bother to look closely some things still live and maybe that's relationships and maybe that is friendships maybe that is clothes that you thought you would never wear again that suddenly you can. Think about that. This is Dear Mama Sal saying bye-bye for now.